Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and this is part two of an introduction to geologic cross-sections. Okay, so I made a mistake uh, at the end of the last video. I said you got to finish exercise four. Of course, what I meant is you had to finish the second half of exercise three. So my mistake there, I do apologize. Okay, so now we're on to exercise four. Now exercise four is, as you can see, pretty much like all the previous exercises. Here's our line of section, there. Here are our beds. As you can see, this bed then this bed do not have any information about their dip, but this bed does, this bed does, and this bed does. So, you know, we can we can be relatively happy about that. Okay, so as you can see here, we also have GR. So GR is going to be something like a granite. It's going to be an intrusive igneous rock of some kind. Now, for this particular uh, argument we are going to say that GR is younger than all of these layers of rock here so we're going to say that GR has intruded through them okay now one of the problems that we have in geology is that when we are trying to draw the contact of things like granites underground well it's very very difficult to predict what that contact will do because if you, if you think about it, a granite intrusion is not a nice layer of rock. It doesn't have a consistent dip and dip direction. So the boundary of this granite is just going to go all over the place. It's going to go wherever it wants to. So when we're drawing something like this, we have to essentially go for a bit of artistic license. So here we go again. We're going to select our diagram. We're going to copy. We're going to go to PowerPoint paste it. We are going to draw our marker lines, which obviously I'm going to color in red. Okay, now if you remember our line of sections here, so now we're going to put a marker line here, and I'm just going to extend it to reach the topographic section there. Okay, so this is where our granite would be on our diagram. Now, in terms of these lines, I'm leaving those all to you guys. I'm not going anywhere near them. So that one's up to you, or those ones, should I say, are up to you. Now, bear in mind, because these beds were intruded by the granite, they will terminate when they hit the granite. They'll stop, okay? In terms of the granite itself, well, I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to go to symbol, and then I'm going to use one of the drawing tools. So I'm going to use something like uh, freeform, or maybe I would use something like curve. Okay, so maybe I'll go for something like, maybe I'll go for curve, something that's got a bit, a bit of a smoother finish to it. So I'm just going to have my line, it's going to come around here like this. and that's going to be my granite contact. Now, when we draw these contacts, we do tend to draw them, you know, nearly vertical, but you know, they, they have a bit of bit of style to them, shall we say. And so I'm just gonna select this, I'm gonna format it, just gonna make it black, there you go. That'll be the boundary of my granite, okay? And because this granite has intruded through the sequence of rocks, that means any layer of rock that comes up to the granite so here we go let's say this is a, a bedding plane this layer of rock when it comes to the granite it's going to stop okay it's going to going to come to a stop at the granite okay so the layer of rock will not continue into the granite because the granite intruded that layer of rock and it destroyed it okay whatever you know this layer of rock over here has been lost it's gone okay so the rest of that I can leave to you. On to the next one. So next we have this exercise here. Now in this exercise here, once again, you can see we have ourselves a selection of different dips. So you can see here, so we have this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. We have quite a few, okay? Now, a few things to note. Number one, EC, EC. So the layer of rock on this side of this gray feature is the same. JD, JD, the layer of rock on this side of this black feature is the same. So don't treat them as separate layers of rock. They're the same layer of rock. All right. 
So the other thing you'll notice now is once again we have consistent dips. Now ignore the black feature and ignore the grey feature for now. Each of these other beds here you can see they're all dipping, or should I say the dip direction, is all towards A prime. So that's very consistent. However, you will notice that the value is moving all over the place. Once again, that is completely normal on a geologic map. That's because when we are taking the measurements, essentially they're being taken by a human. So there's going to be a small amount of variation involved. So even though this one's 36, 38, 36, 35, 37, and 40, there's a, you know there's about a five, four, five degree variation there. But even so, that you know is approximately equal, so that they're, they're relatively consistent with each other. Okay, so once again, to do our diagram, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to copy. We're going to go to PowerPoint. We're going to go to a fresh slide, and we're going to go paste. And there's our diagram again. Okay, now. What are we going to do next? Well, the next thing we have to think about is what are these things here? So we have these rectangular bodies here. You'll notice how they don't wiggle around all over the place. They have a very consistent width. Now, this is very, very, um, this is very, very often the same kind of uh, pattern displayed by this feature quite a lot of the time. So if we think about the rock wall, okay. So in the rock wall, we had two features that were vertical, and they looked kind of like this, didn't they? They kind of just punched their way through the layers of rock, and you know, they did what they wanted, pretty much. So can you remember what those two vertical features were called on the rock wall? So once again, I'm going to give you a second, have a think about it. Hopefully it will come back to you. Anyone? They are called dikes. So what we see here, dy and di, those are going to be dikes. And this is what dikes look like on maps. They tend to be, they tend to have a very consistent width and they are just essentially you know, pretty much straight a lot of the time. Okay, so here are our layers of rock. So we're going to plot our layer. So once again, shapes, line, and I am going to once again make this line red. Okay, so here's A and there's A prime. So this is going to be our line of sections. So this is where we're taking our measurements from. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to deal with this dike here. So I'm, I'm just going to use Alt once again. And I'm going to copy and paste. Use Alt. And I'm going to also do this contact here okay so I'm now going to resize just so everything works so everything is in contact with the topographic section there there and there okay now the measurement for this dike is 80 degrees so this means the contact here and the contact here are both going to be dipping at 80 degrees. So okay, let's do that. So let's draw our horizontal line. We're going to turn that black. And then we're going to rotate more rotation options and we're going to turn this to 80 degrees okay then obviously we're going to move it into position using the alt key and there and I'm going to copy and paste to do the other one put that there and whilst holding down shift I'm going to resize so they are the correct length there and there okay so this is our dike, and you can see it's dipping down into the earth at 80 degrees. Now, when it comes to dikes, we tend to keep the thickness consistent. So we assume that the thickness we're seeing here will be continued all the way down through our cross-section. That might not be true, but that's the assumption we're making. So what about this boundary right here? Well, we know that JU is dipping at 38 degrees, 
and we know that JD is dipping at 36 degrees. So we're just going to, for argument's sake, I'm just going to call it 37. So once again, I am going to draw my line. There's my horizontal line. Oh, didn't want to do that. I wanted to select that. Then I'm going to go to format, make it black, rotation, more rotation options, rotation, and I said 37 degrees, so 37. And I'm going to hit close. Okay. And I am going to move that into position there. Okay. Now, the thing that you'll remember is that dikes must be younger than the rocks which they cross cut. So we can see that DY here punches its way through JD. So what does this mean? Well, it means that... <laughs> Sorry, my daughter's just turning on the light behind me. It means that DY will be cutting through JD. So it means that this bedding plane here will be cut by the dike, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do... I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste another copy. Okay, now I'm going to resize this. So I'm going to hold down shift. And I'm going to resize it so it terminates, it ends at the contact there. Okay, now I'm just going to move this across. I'm going to line this up here so they form a continuous line. I'm going to resize so this makes it to the bottom. Then I'm going to resize this so it comes out to the other side of the dike. Oh, didn't do that quite right. There we go. So, as you can see, because the dike punches through, it's going to cut through the through the contacts here. Okay? So the contact is going to stop on one side of the dike and it's going to reappear on the other side of the dike. Okay. So, the rest of this diagram you should be able to do now without any hassle whatsoever. So once again, I am not going to take you any further. You should be able to do this by yourself. All right. So the final diagram is this diagram here. Now this one is going to be a bit of a challenge and it's designed to be a bit of a challenge. It's not designed to be a horrible challenge, okay? It's not out to be nasty. So we're going to select our diagram and we're going to deposit, we're going to deposit it, we're going to paste it, sorry, into PowerPoint. Okay, so what have we got going on here? Well, as you can see, we have several layers of rock, 40, 40, 40, and they're dipping towards A, so they're going this way. And then we have these layers, 20, 20, 20, 20, they are dipping that way, so we have maybe an anticline, uh, sorry, a syncline, maybe. Now, then we have this layer over here, which is then dipping at 10 degrees towards A prime. So something interesting is going on there. The other thing I would want you to note for a second is that HV, okay, appears here, and it also appears there. Now, running down this feature here, you can see we have this line. And we can see that this line has this arrow attached to it, okay? So this arrow is telling us the dip and dip direction of this line here, which is a fault plane. So there's a fault cutting through our sequence. Okay, so once again, we are going to draw our line to help us work out where we need to be. There we go. As I've done every time before, I am going to color that one red. I'm going to get it into position. To get it into position, of course, remember, hold down the Alt key, and the end of my line is going to, of course, touch here, where the fault cuts across the line of section. And I'm then going to re-lengthen, so there we go, I'm going to get it to the right length. And so our fault is 80 degrees, so it's quite steep, and it's dipping towards, the arrow will tell us, dipping towards A prime. So here we go again. Shapes, line, horizontal line. Then I'm going to format it. In my case, I'm going to make it black. Rotate, more rotation options, and the angle is going to be 80 degrees. Done. Okay. 
Now, if you want to make it look different to the bedding planes in your diagram, you could maybe uh, pick an effect. You could maybe say, okay, maybe I want the line to be a dash, maybe. Okay, that's not normal, you know, you know, that's not the way we normally do it in geology, but just for this instance, we'll make it a dash line. And then, of course, I'm going to use the Alt key to move it into position. So there it is. And when I change the length of it, I'm going to be holding down Shift. So there we go there. Okay, so that's my fault. Now, if we go back here, you will notice that there's a couple of questions underneath the diagram. And so essentially it wants, wants you to tell us which side is going to be the, the upthrown side, so which side has gone up, and which side has gone down. We also want to know what type of fault is it, normal, reverse, strike slip. So you'll be able to work that out once you've plotted this, hopefully. Okay, so what does a fault mean? Well, a fault is essentially like a wall. Your bedding plane will continue until it hits the fault, at which point, once again, it will stop. So let's think about the bedding plane between HV and IG. So I'm going to copy this marker again. Hold down the Alt key. OK, because remember, it's where the bedding plane crosses the line of section here. That's, where we're in, that's what we're interested in. And then it's going to be 40 degrees. So here is our bedding plane. There we go, line it up. Now you can see once again our bedding plane is going past our fault here, so I'm going to hold down shift. And there. It's going to stop when it hits the fault plane. Okay? The fault plane is a barrier. The bedding plane cannot go past it. Okay? Now because it's a fault, the layers of rock on this side of the fault will be operating independently of the layers of rock on this side of the fault. Okay? So as you can see, so we have HV and IG here, and we have IG and HV over here. Okay? So we there's the contact here between them, and here's the same contact there. Okay? Now, this contact here is operating independently of this contact here. So don't try and join them together. It's not like the syncline here, okay? In this case, both sides are operating together, so they're joined up. In this case, there is a fault in the way, so they are operating independently of each other. So just bear that in mind. The rest of this is all relatively straightforward. Just plot the layers, and this boundary here, okay, is going to be dipping 10 degrees towards A prime. All right? So just this contact here, 10 degrees towards A prime. Okay, so it's all relatively straightforward. You should be able to do it pretty quickly. Okay, now remember, if you do decide you want to do it by hand, you are going to need a protractor. All right, so just bear that in mind. Okay, once again, if you have any problems, please contact me. Or you can also speak to me directly via uh, using uh, during office hours at the allotted time and day. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoy this. It's a reasonably fun lab. Most people quite enjoy it. So take care and thank you.